All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another edition of Shabbat Lounge. This is Matt. And Jake here. Coming to you with Jazz Hands, <laughs> uh, doing another Torah portion, and we call this... Vayera? Talking Torah. Let's talk Talking Torah. Lounge. That's right. And Man, uh, we appreciate you appreciate you being here. I was trying to throw it to you. I got gotcha. you. We'll so, edit that out and post. Yes, in post. We do a lot of posting, posting up in basketball, too. Post editing. Um, we were known for our height in basketball. Yes. But uh, we are here talking about, how do you say it again? Vayera. 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 And I appeared. What do you think that means? I appeared. Uh, I'm guessing there's going to be someone that shows up. Yes, in a big way, kind yeah. of. <laughs> yeah. So, and this this is a pretty good painting. Uh, I'm sure it's a famous painting. I don't know my famous paintings, but uh, it does seem to be showing um, a showdown. Hey, there's something happening here. I think there's uh, UFOs in there and maybe. everything. Looks or maybe that's the jetpack guy. You maybe that's an all-seeing eye. It's that jetpack guy. Oh, that's the guy that's on the water with the jet. Yeah. That guy. There, nailed it. Yeah. Uh, right. So this is Exodus chapter 6, verse 2. Skip that first verse. We don't need it. And then uh, through chapter 9, verse 35. All right, so let's uh, go into it. And so... Um, it is definitely about the plagues. And so I just showed uh, Jake a lovely video, Plagues of Exodus. And he's got some good songs rumbling in his he head. From, That's um, right. Something we used to use a long time ago is Bluefish TV. And they had this uh, funny thing they did with this growling music. Yeah. And a spoof. Yeah. So It was anyway. lovely. Yes, lovely. So this is a uh, PDF that you can easily find where people have taken down basically um each plague was an attack on the, one of the gods or deities of egypt and so showing yahweh anything do, do we want to go down and say all of this or just hit a few of the points uh let's just hit a few of the points maybe because i think i think People can find this on online, well, right? Yeah, and, and to me, the Nile is a good one because the Nile was the lifeblood of the country. And so it, all of us probably in school at some point, fifth, sixth grade, you had to study Egypt. And you learned this. You learned that the Nile was it in Egypt. And if you got up very far off the Nile, you probably died. Probably died. So it, it was everything. They shipped goods on the Nile. You know, they, they would grow something here and, and ship it up. Yeah. You know, because it flows north. And um, so there was just a, you know, it was just, it was life in Egypt. Everything revolved around the Nile. The country of Egypt did not go very far off of that river. Yeah. And then just knowing that, you know, they had all these different gods that they worshipped. This goddess with the head of a frog, uh, a, a god over the dust of the earth, all this stuff that it's just... I mean, that's what they were thinking, I guess. Well, and there's definitely no coincidence that all this happens to the place that's considered the source of all the mystery religion in the world. It happened here in Egypt. And every culture took one of these gods and, you know, modified it somehow. And so that's why sometimes it gets really confusing. And so in movies like Zeitgeist, where they kind of, try to go against uh, what we hold to be true and say that it's a farce. I think they got confused on some of that stuff because the the names of these deities are the same and different. I mean, the names change, but, but the, the deities, deities are the same. Yeah, right. And so the Greeks and the Romans and the, you know, the Babylonians, I did that in the wrong order, but you know, they all had a version of this that they got from Egypt. Right. Egypt kind of wrote the book on it, and then, uh, and unfortunately for us living here in the United States, uh, we took a lot of these things and we brought them into Washington D.C. And you can find elements of these deities there if you know where to look, which right. it's not hard, I don't think. Yeah. So, so anyway, it definitely is a targeted thing. Why do you think he targeted? Why? Why did he go straight to their deities? Well, I mean, to show that. He is, he's the one in charge, not them. Yeah. Uh, that they yeah. are not a thing. Yeah. And by the end, I think he makes a pretty good point. Pretty good point, yeah. Pretty hard to argue. Mm -hmm. So then we have Exodus 6, um, 
but well, but that's the part of the text. But Moses, uh, it's clear that he appears as a god to Pharaoh, right? And Pharaoh claimed to be God himself, right? And so I think that's part of the uh, the miracle that happens with Moses, and the the reason Moses gets a voice because you know mo- everyone else. I mean, you had to be special to get so close to Pharaoh. He did. It wasn't like you could just. I mean, it's just like going to see the president of the United States. You don't just go there. Yeah, I find it hard to believe that his his entourage couldn't have intercepted this old man yeah. <laughs> on the way mm-hmm. to the Nile every day. 80-year-old man. when his uh, He's going to be there again. Just get him before I yes. get there. Yeah, take care of the crazy guy. But, you know, he had an audience with him, and it's because mo- there was part of Pharaoh that was fascinated by Moses at some level or, or considered him... Uh, you know, another deity. Moses definitely did not consider himself that way, but Pharaoh may have seen him that way. Because clearly Pharaoh did not have the same understanding. So in essence, you also see that there's an attack with earth, wind, and fire here. You know, And the, water. And water, yes. Yeah. I'm missing that. Um, <laughs> You're and, stuck on the band, I think. Yes, earth, wind, and fire. I think that's what I was thinking. In Exodus 9.23, once you read that, and Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and Yahweh sent thunder and hail, and the fire ran along upon the ground, and Yahweh rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So, so yeah, so a lot of times we don't really think of a fire plague, but it was along with the hail plague. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it just shows that uh, Yahuwah has dominion over all of these elements, mm-hmm. and he made that clear. That the, by the end of this, there's no one thinking that he didn't own all of these things and could do whatever he wanted to. Right. So plagues one through three were experienced by the Hebrews. They had to live through them. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think that was? I mean, I think it's all foreshadowing to us uh, for sure. And in Revelation uh, later, and uh, then he makes this designation, which is interesting that it's at plague four, like the fourth commandment, being holy and set apart, keeping the Shabbat. And so this is when he starts showing them to be holy and set apart. You know, that he makes this holy set apart designation at plague four, they are holy and set apart. And uh, they may not have known what was going on, but uh, but he clearly made it known that his he, he was separating his people. Yeah, and I kind of, you know, part of me pictures that in the creation, day four is kind of a, it's kind of where everything kind of starts to, uh, the system kind of comes together and is kind of sus- self-sustaining almost at that point. This This, you know the earth and the sun and the moon mm-hmm. as a system, the timeline and everything. It's a it kind of day four. It kind of all comes together as like, okay, now this thing can, can sustain life that I'm going to put on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. And so if you haven't ever studied that concept that they, uh, they, they had to live through and experience the first three, you know, that's something you should check out and, try to figure out what does that mean for us. You know, I think it definitely means end times doesn't mean that uh, you get uh, Free pass. raptured out of here. Yeah. And what a lot of people believe, you know, and they, they used to be those bumper stickers of this car. Suddenly, if the driver disappears, it's because I've been raptured. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think it's going to quite work the way some people thought. Yeah. Um, Exodus 9.14 for I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart and upon thy servants and upon thy people that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. So this was interesting because it's the plagues upon thy heart, mm. right? I think that'd be like fear. Probably. And so part of this is, literally fear of death and fear of him because they did not, you know, it it does appear that they forgot who he was and we don't know how much fear of the one true Elohim that these Hebrews actually had. So we clearly know, we talked about last week, Jethro, I believe he had that fear, um, but uh, we don't know that that these other 
Hebrews had the fear, and certainly the Egyptian Egyptians did not. And we learned right. that uh, as they leave, there's some Egyptians that come with them, mm -hmm. and they developed the fear, the fear of Yahweh. Yep. And so sometimes it does take adversity for us to get things. Yeah, and you see too this the fear you know upon thy servants, right? The plagues mm -hmm. on thy servants. Um, later. You see some of the servants going, oh, that Moses guy, he just said this plague was going to happen. Let's get the animals indoors. Yeah. And some yeah. of them ignored it, but some of them were like, oh, this is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I have seen that guy before. And when he says something, it, it happens. I'm, I listen to him. Yeah. I'm done listening to the Pharaoh guy. He seems like every time, you know, and we don't know, but you know what people knew about the conversation. But, but people are people. Yeah. They had to talk. So, I mean, good point, man. Yes. They had to have those water cooler conversations and be like, "Hey, yeah, I heard that this is going to happen," or I, "I heard that he talked to Pharaoh and they had some crazy thing." Yeah. So, did they talk in conspiracies then? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. All right. So, um, so as you look at these plagues, the the water to blood it has to do with provision, and um, right, he hit him right where it hurt. Yeah, you yeah. kind of can't live without water. No, and especially in the desert where every bit of your being comes from what you produce and grow and can do with this river. Which is ironic, you know, here you have this pagan nation living on this thing that Yahuwah created mm -hmm. and reaping the benefits of something he made and not giving him any of the credit and glory. And I think he was, the, he was done. Yeah, that's kind of the story of humanity, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Living on his riches. Yep. And uh, when we talk, up, talk about frogs on a scientific term, you know, a lot of people say you can look at the health of an ecosystem by its frogs. If you have a good frog population, uh, your ecosystem is doing well. Right, they're kind of one of the first uh, bellwethers of of like pollution in a in a system or something like that because they, they absorb a lot of that that stuff in their through their skin very easily and we don't think about frogs in our culture today about be representing fertility but uh, they but certainly they did. did then mm -hmm. yeah they must we've have replaced us. that with rabbits forget yes, frogs yes we went with the furry yeah they um, probably had more frogs over there than rabbits maybe i don't know maybe i don't know so gnats and lice you know, definitely uh, that's an attack on the flesh, vanity, and they uh, they come from the earth, from the dust of the earth. But Yeah, and that was uh, the earth thing was kind of a uh, a god of the earth, a god of mm -hmm. the, the dust of the earth kind of mm -hmm. attack too. Maybe even a tie-in to creating man out of the dust of the earth. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting. And we all know flies like waste and nasty so it was there was heaps of dead frogs laying around there's lots of stinky blood water plenty of opportunity to lay your maggots your your babies in mm. Mm -hmm. so and then the cattle um we talked about love, beauty, music. I don't really remember where we got that from. Do you? Cattle love. That beauty, was music. kind of a uh I think that was uh, their their deity, their cattle deity was mm -hmm. was about love and. Let's beauty. go see if we have it in it, that. Yeah. This page here, present uh, your your covering up here, fertility. The sick cattle stop moving. Don't don't move anymore. Uh, often depicted with the head of horns of a bull, sometimes as a bull wearing the symbols of Hathor, fertility goddess. But I think I think that love beauty thing uh, comes from the 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 way that they worshipped uh, the cattle mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah, they 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 did a lot of things with it in their dress, and there's, you've seen a lot of. Images that depicted that kind of thing. Yeah. All right, and then the last two we want to talk about boils. You know, another vanity thing. Hail, provision. You know, especially boils and vanity. You know, um, I would think that would hurt, you know think about 
our movie stars and Hollywood people, how would a bunch of boils affect their life? <laughs> a little. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. No amount of makeup can probably cover up the boils I had. No. And they were probably painful. And oozing. Oozing. Did they pop them? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know, but it sounds terrible. And it kind of wonders, did they, did they have scars? Yeah, they might have had scars from the boils the rest of their life. I mean, if Could you be. have acne scars and you have these terrible boil, boils of biblical proportions and places you can't even imagine, yikes. That yeah. sounds terrible. Yeah. No thanks. I'll pass on that one. Yeah. So, no boils for me, thanks. And I'm then, driving. Yeah, and then also um, it uh, foreshadows the plagues that are coming, you know, right. there's a lot of scripture that talks about, you know, what gets us to these plagues, Jake, if, what, what's going to bring these plagues? What does he say? Or disobedient, disobedience, <laughs> you know, not following yeah. his law. Right. So, and so, you know, we, and so then you see there are plagues and we see plagues today and, you know, and we can go into conspiracy theory and be like, oh, it's these people doing this. And, and then it could be from the father himself. Right. Um, and it's just a natural consequence because we are disobedient people. And, um, we certainly are. And they, um, the hail, you know, destroys their way of life. And, um, you know, it's hard to imagine how devastated Egypt was. And we just don't have any concept. Yeah, out here in Texas, you get hail on your crop, and you're like, not much you can do about that. Yeah, yeah, and this just wasn't any hail. This was hail that killed the person. And, you know, we did have a hailstorm like this in um, Texas in 90, I don't know, 90-something, um, and they did kill some people. It was like baseball, or no, it was basketball size. Holy moly. And at the time, it was the United States costliest hailstorm. And um, it was, I think, billions of dollars of damage. Like every car that was outside was totaled or had to be repaired. Roofs had to be replaced. You know, it was a really bad storm. Yeah. Not to mention the burning down of the whole city. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this wasn't just normal hail. This could have been even like a little bit of sulfur raining down. Sodom and Gomorrah style. A little style. Sodom and Gomorrah style, yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Anyway, um, but I think we are approaching the end here of week 14. Anything else you want to say about week 14? Um, there's, you know, I know a lot of people talk about the plagues. Uh, read between the lines when you're reading through this stuff, because there's, there's more than just the plagues happening there. It's, you know, it's the dialogue between uh, Moses and the Pharaoh and the dialogue between uh, Moses and Yahweh and and just that whole interaction is interesting and uh, just don't don't get hung up on the on the you know we, we do a high level kind of here on with the talking Torah series and you know the plagues is easy to pick out and hmm. and maybe bring some things up that people haven't thought about with those and yeah there's a lot of information with that and uh, uh, but when you're reading through it don't forget to read between the lines yeah, and one of those would be, you know, the common people in Egypt, the Hebrews and the Egyptians. What did they see? What did they experience? What did they think? And I think by the end, that's why you see this is a, a mixed multitude of people because these Egyptians had been sitting around going, okay, what what's going on here? And especially by, and I think that's one reason he sets them apart was so the Egyptians could see, hey, there's something different about those guys. What they nothing's happening over there, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, you know, that word had to get around and, and it does. And so by the time they're leaving, they're like, what are y'all doing? Okay. Well, I'm doing that. I, I, I like to live. Uh, <laughs> this is terrible and I'm ready to leave. Yeah. You know, he, he made it so terrible that, um, leaving seems like a leaving out into the unknown desert seems better than staying to see what happens. Right. So, Anyway, so that's week 14 of Vieira. And we would ask you to, even though I think, can I exit out of that? I think yes. I can. So we do, do ask, you probably can't see it right now, but the subscribe button, we do ask that you would hit that. 
um, but Jake says it's over here. So well, now it's down here. See. Okay. And please subscribe. Please like us. Please, please like, like us. us. <laughs> um, and uh, share this with anyone that you find. And once again, we're not claiming to have a corner of the truth or have all the answers here. We want you to go read these things and find out what you think. Right. And this stuff will be up on sabbathlounge.com. And uh, you can check out the slides and everything there. Yep. And if you Google Sabbath Lounge, you will uh, find us pretty easily in different places. So once again, we appreciate you listening. This is Matt and Jake signing off.